Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the VFR 400 build. Today is frame day or engine into frame day. I'm going to start rebuilding this engine back. Um, I've already been out here. I've put the rocker covers on already, which is just a simple job. I'll show you that. And uh, the plan today is to try and get the engine into the frame and possibly see if we can actually get it fired up. We can set up some temporary wiring and so on. I'll be really excited to see if we can fire it up. I filled up the engine with oil up to its correct level, put the rocker covers on, and um, yeah, I think we can possibly get that far today. So um, let's have a quick look at um, the engine and then uh, let's see how we get on. All right, guys, so here we are. This is the engine. So as you can see, guys, I put the rocker covers on. I cleaned up these bolts as well. I put them all back on. Um, checked her for leaks and stuff everything seems good to go I've made a little makeshift bench at the moment so i plan to sort of put the frame and build it on that that way i'm going to be bending down um so that's basically yeah so what i'm going to be doing today um here's some of the bolts i've been using this product shout out to um i'll see if i can um uh, link the channel but i'm uh, one of the build channels he's uh, been recommending this product so i thought i'd try it out and it's really really great so these are the bolts that i'm going to be using all i did was clean these up uh, in, I soaked them in some vinegar to get the rust off put them in the ultrasonic cleaner as well and I've just sprayed it with this stuff and um, it seems to be really really good stuff so um, bolts are ready to go now so I'm going to go and grab the frame and see if we can um, bolt the frame on also another thing I did as well is I installed a new neutral switch on here because knowing what issue I had on the other bike where it failed on me I thought I might as well put a new one in this now because this has been in this for 16 years sitting outside so I've replaced the neutral switch so hopefully that um, should um, you know negate any issues of the electrics as far as starting up so yeah I'm going to go grab the frame now and see if we can drop this frame on here okay so let's see if we can get this figured out So we've got the engine in its frame and it's looking good. I like the I like in the contrast, the black and the grey. It's looking good, just exactly how I wanted it to look. So yeah, that's it. So um, I'm going to get the wiring harness and let's see if we can temporarily get some power into this thing. I'll uh, put some spark plugs in. I still got the old spark plugs. I'll give them a quick clean up. Um, I will be replacing those, but um, they did sort of fire up the last time. So I think we should be able to get some spark out of them so yeah let's see if we can get this thing um starting up all right so as i said i did put a new uh, neutral switch in there you can see it so one of the first things we can connect up which is this this connection here we can connect up to the uh to the neutral switch that will give us uh should give us a neutral light when we do um install the uh 
the dash so yeah let's do that next guys just a quick update so this is where i'm at now so this is the harness which is literally just just hanging down and all i've done is just connect everything up i've just literally just hung this on here connected up these leads to wherever they go same thing here things are just dangling ecu is just here dangling uh these are the ignition coils um so at the moment all i need to do is to put the spark plugs in connect these up i'm gonna have to do some sort of temporary uh connection i think here for where the key lock goes um, so i'm probably gonna have to jump some pins to get power through then i'm gonna hook it, hook up a jump lead from a battery to the other bike just to get power and then we'll see whether we get any power we should get a neutral light on when we do get power on and then uh, i'm gonna crank it and as far as cranking is concerned this is the uh this was the old cable you see it's broken off that was on the uh, starter motor so i'll just be touching that on there to try and see if i can crank it so yeah i'm gonna go and try that now so all i've done is just clean up the old spark plugs this is what i'm gonna use for now um i'll probably put three of them in and i'll leave one out just to uh so that we can check it for spark hi guys so here's an update this is the next day so i spent loads of time on this off camera yesterday trying to fault find electrics so i figured it out in the end what my issue was i wasn't getting any power to the bike i'll quickly run through what i've done it's a total mess the wiring at the moment there's a lot of clamps and leads running all over the place but it's just for me to do all the diagnostics um, so i pretty much got most of the electrics working so i've proved the harness is fine um, the only thing I'm not getting at the moment which I need to check in is the oil light and also I'm not getting any spark um, I had an, an ECU here which I wasn't sure was any good I also took the ECU from the other bike which I know works and I'm still not getting any spark so could be the spark leads could be something else so I'm going to do some testing and see if we can get some spark on this bike all right guys so as I said it looks a right mess here um, probably can't understand anything that's going on here well, basically, here is the main harness here, so it sort of runs off. So I've made all these connections, which are quite straightforward. Um, pretty much everything is connected. Um, connected here, again, this is the, uh, the starter, basically. So that's connected. Um, I need to do some, this is where we would connect the uh, key switch. So I've got to do some jumping wiring because I haven't got a key switch. So I'm essentially hot wiring it, um, which is basically just joining these two pins together. Um, to get the ignition um, we've got uh, things like the uh, coils which I'm not 100% sure are any good I can't remember if these are the ones that I used when I did the initial startup or whether I used ones from the other bike um, and this is the spark plug that I'm trying to look for spark on um, all these sides here are sort of connected up so all the lights are sort of connected um, I know one is missing a bulb, so I need to double check that that's not the oil one uh, Or make sure the bulbs are also good as well. So I'll test those 
but essentially at the moment I'm getting the neutral light which I should get and I should get the oil light now I wasn't getting any crank yesterday um, I thought it was the starter starter solenoid which is fine tested out fine the issue the reason why I wasn't getting the crank was right back again to our neutral switch so the neutral switch is fine the cabling is fine but the bike wasn't in neutral so because it's not in neutral it wouldn't give me a neutral light and it wouldn't crank once the bike's not in neutral you it's almost like it's dead so i had to get a vice grip and play along with the gears and um, then it popped into neutral and the light came on so i spent hours on that assuming it was in neutral and it wasn't in neutral so it must have got knocked out of neutral while i was rebuilding the engine which silly me i should have checked that so we are in neutral now we do have power to the bike um so from where i left it last night as you can see i was doing all sorts of stuff um using the ground here got a battery out um so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to tidy this up a little bit so i've got less sort of leads running everywhere and then we're going to try it again and see if we can get spark on this bike first thing i need to do to get power is to jump as i said these two pins here and I'm not sure if you guys can see straight away I've got light so that is my neutral light that's on um, pretty sure it's the neutral I will double check again so we've got the green and red stripe cable and the black and orange stripe cable so in the schematic which I have here thank god for this schematic we have the neutral indicator I'm not sure if you can see that there bulb and that is the green and red stripe and the black and orange stripe so we know that it's definitely on neutral light the oil pressure indicator which is what i need to figure out next is the blue and orange and the same black and orange so i'm looking for the bulb that's got the blue and orange which is uh this one blue and orange and black and orange so firstly, I'm going to swap the working bulb, the bulb we know works, just to make sure that it's not the bulb. So I take that bulb out. Oh, there we go. So it is a bulb. So I've got a faulty bulb. Simple like that. Process of elim elimination. So let's take this bulb out, this other bulb, which is for the high beam. I don't need that at the moment. And that doesn't work either. So I have two faulty bulbs in here, it looks like. Hang on, let's have a look. Let's put this one back in there. Yeah. So I actually have two faulty bulbs. So, looking at it, this bulb does actually look like it's blown. Although I had two working bulbs on this before, so I must have damaged the bulb somewhere. Um, let's try this one back in here again, just to make sure. Yeah, 100% dead. So... We've got two faulty bulbs, so I've only got one working bulb at the moment, which is a bit of a bummer. So what's most important for us right now is our oil pressure bulb. So we know it's in neutral anyway. So I'm going to connect this to the oil pressure bulb because when we crank this, we do want to make sure that light goes off. So right now, the indicator we have there is our oil pressure. Today I just want to make sure I'm getting ignition. Once we confirm we've got ignition, then I can take all this wiring stuff off and actually start bolting things on properly. Um, yeah, but for now, we're just going to try it like this. So let's try and see if this is still running. So I've got it off at the moment. So we shouldn't get any spark now. Right, you can hear the starter solenoid. So I haven't connected it to the to the actual starter motor. So one of the first things I need to change is this broken lead. This is the old starter. We couldn't get it off at the first, um, when I was first taking it apart. But I have, a, I do have another one, so I broke this old one off. So I'm gonna try and find the uh, new one and replace this um, 
starter cable. Right, so I found another one of these. So this is the one that goes on the starter solenoid. And then this is the end that goes on the starter motor. So I can replace that old dodgy one. There's the old bolt, which I had to cut off because it was seized on. Got some new bolts as well. Okay. Alright, that's one more thing permanently connected. No leaf for a jump need there anymore. And one free hand. Right, let's see if we can get something cranking now. There we go. Okay, so we got cranking. And also the oil pressure light is what we're looking for to go off. Perfect, so that means we have oil pressure. So that's a good sign for our engine. Next on, we are now looking for spark. So I'll turn the ignition on to run. And what we need is to ground these spark plugs and I also need to ground the uh, ignition coil or the bracket of the ignition coil, which I think I've done already here with this red lead here, because it's not bolted to the frame at the moment. So I'm just grounding it with this lead. Um, I'm gonna make sure that we're getting a good ground on it. So I'll do a continuity test between that bracket So that's the ground of the bracket, of the frame. But I'm not getting a ground. Maybe that's why I wasn't getting spark. Ah, interesting. Okay. Let's see. This lead is not, or this bracket is not grounding through. It is a bit rusty though. I wonder if it's because of that. Let me just clean it up a little bit. Clean up a little spot. Okay. Back to bare metal. I have a new bracket like this anyway, so nice clean new one. Let's see if we're getting a ground to this now. Still not getting ground on it. Oh, 
Okay, there we are. We've got a ground connection. Let's try here. Yeah, so we're definitely getting a ground from the ignition coil. So let's try again and see if we get a spark this time. So the for ignition we need a ground on the ignition coil, we need a feed from the stop switch to the black side of the ignition coil. Um, that's also assuming that I've got the leads right way around as well on the ignition coil. I think it doesn't matter which way but I could be wrong which way but let's see if we're getting that black cable from the ignition start button which is uh here we go which is the start button so it's the black and white stripe black and white stripe to the black on the ignition coil okay so we're getting feed there that's correct we also have a blue and yellow from the coil the blue and yellow goes to the ignition control unit the ECU so that's the blue and yellow the blue and yellow is this one here to the ECU or the blue and yellow on the ECU and yellow I believe it's this one yellow and blue so that's connected so that's fine also we have a green cable from the ECU all the way to turn signal relay and it also goes to the fan switch and it also goes to earth so the green cable should be going to earth so let's make sure this green cable is going to earth so the green cable on the ECU which is this be going to earth the ground I'm sure that's the green and it doesn't seem to be going down to ground okay let's see where else it should where it should be ending up maybe there's a cable somewhere that's supposed to be an earth tab or something. Green. Uh, let's see. Comes down this loom here. There's a green one here. I'm wondering if it earths from this rectifier. Let's see. Nope. 
so where else does it go? It also goes to the fan switch, which is somewhere over here, I believe. So it ends up here at the fan switch, which is the green. So where else does it go? Where else does it go? Turn signal relay, which I believe is this unit here. So we've got it here. Okay, um, I do believe that is the ground actually. And it also goes to headlights. Well, ultimately, it should end up down to ground. So, the issue we have at the moment is we're not getting a ground on that green cable. So what I'll probably do for now is just connect this green one here with a bit of wire straight to the chassis and see if that makes any difference. So what I've done is I've connected that green one and I'm going to put that straight onto the, to the uh, ground of the bike. Right. Let's see now if our green on our ECU is going down to earth. Yes, it is. So we've got earth on that green and we've also got, there we go. We also have the ground on the coil pack. So it's probably one of these parts that's probably supposed to be bolted onto the bike which would end up earthing that green cable somewhere and obviously because a lot of these parts are not bolted on something's not grounded somewhere so i've put in a ground cable there so we should be good to go now let's see if we get a spark yes got spark we got spark guys we got spark so here's our spark plug Let's have a look. Yes, so guys, we have spark sorted. It was a simple earth issue. So as I said, once I bought all these parts on, there's going to be somewhere that this earth is going to be grounded to. I'm not sure what, what it is that needs to be uh, getting that green cable, but I can figure it out from the schematic. Uh, something that's probably bolted on a sensor or something that's going to make could be the fan sensor which is um, or the coolant sensor which is connected to the to the body so maybe that's where we get the air from but for now we got earth here or ground here so i think um we are good to go so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to check that coil pack we'll do the same thing we will ground it off here we'll put a ground on here and um, we'll see if we get spark on this one. If we get spark on this one, I'm going to assume we're getting spark on the other one. I'll put this spark plug in. I'll put that spark plug in. We've got all the four spark plugs in. And then I'll probably spray some brake cleaner in there and see if we can get any noise out of this thing. So let's keep this ground here. We need that ground, that yellow, that uh, green cable ground. And now we are going to ground the we're going to now ground, uh, let's see if I can show you guys. We are now going to ground uh, this solenoid here. Sorry, not solenoid, coil. Uh, and then we obviously need to, to ground this here. So I'm gonna try and see if we get spark on the second one. So far, no spark on that one. So let's just make sure we're getting all our grounds in the right place. We got ground on the uh, ignition coil. 
so we should have got all our grounds in the right place so why are we not getting any spark from this one <laughs> Now we're getting the ground so it's just uh, i'm gonna have to clean all these coil pops coil packs up all the contacts with the dremel before we put it all together it's all good to know this stuff now so let's try again still not getting anything on this one Guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this spark plug uh, for a different one and see if we get any difference. I'm going to take this spark plug, which we know works. Let's try this one. this other lead and see if that makes any difference all right so I'm not getting anything here what I'm going to do is switch coil packs I'm going to switch the other coil pack over here because we know the other coil pack works just in case it's a dodgy coil pack. And this is the coil pack that looks in worse condition, funny enough. So I'm definitely going to be changing this coil pack at least. Um, right, so let's go again. So we'll connect that ground here. Yeah. We'll put this plug on here. So we've got ground. Let's try again. spark okay so we know it's not the coil pack we know it's not the spark plug it's not the ground so there's got to be some other issue of the wiring to the second ignition coil so we need to look into the schematic and check the second ignition coil what i'm also going to do is i'm going to put the ignition coil that was here i'm going to connect it back on that side and i'm going to test it on the other side and see if it works <laughs> Yep, we're getting spark here. So that spark plug work, this ignition coil works, both ignition coils work, both sparks plug work. So why are we not getting an ignition on this side? So I need to trace these cables. Right, so what do we know about these cables? We know that the black and white one should end up at the black and white of the ECU. Black and white is here. Right, so we've got the black and white, that's fine. And the blue and yellow, because there's only two cables go into this ignition coil. It's got to be one of them. Blue and yellow. This one, this one. Okay. 
Okay, so it looks like we're not getting continuity in the blue and yellow cable for some reason. We're not getting anything. Now that cable should go directly from there to there. So if we're not getting anything, there has to be a break in the cable somewhere. Or maybe in this connection here. Or is it just dirty and rusty inside? Definitely not getting any continuity on that cable. Very interesting. So guys, I'm gonna show you guys close up what we're having the issue we're having here. So we've got these ignition coil here, two and four is the issue. So this cable here, the blue with the yellow dots on it, runs from one side of the ignition coil straight to the ECU connector here. And as you can see, there's nothing else in between that. So there's definitely a break in this cable somewhere. So I might have to unwrap the entire loom, but although I am going to do that at some point and I'm going to retape it up. Um, but I'm just going to try and see if I can find out why I'm not getting anything from here to here and I'll come back Okay guys, so I'm getting a little bit of uh, progress here I just wanted to show this to you guys as I'm doing it So I've been trying to figure out where this break is between here, which is where the ECU is connected to to the other end of the cable, which is where the uh, ignition coil is So what I've got is I've connected my lead here so you can see here, beeps when we have continuity and I've worked my way around. So obviously I'm not getting any continuity on the end of here. So there's definitely a break somewhere. I opened the loom a little bit somewhere in the middle, right in the center somewhere. And you can hear I've got continuity here. So we've got from here to here. I worked my way all the way down. I opened at this junction here uh, also, I found out why it wasn't this is the other end of that green cable. It's actually joined with the green and black uh, But I didn't know where it was joined uh, In the manual it just says frame, but I don't know where that was so this actually It connects to the frame and that's where we get the earth for the ECU and I think it actually connects on the same uh, hole as the as the ignition coil bracket so I checked I chest I tested it and this is definitely the ground so that sorted out our ground issue so what I've done now is I've, uh, see if I can find it here. So I made another little incision here, just a little tiny one. And I'm getting continuity here. So I'm getting continuity all the way to here. So basically we have an issue between here and here. Now, I was wondering if it would be at this point whether it might have, if it's broken here. But then I slide this down a bit. I made another small incision here right next to the end and it's dead so it seems like between here and here is a break in the cable which is really weird as i said i'm getting continuity here nothing here so we've got an issue between here and here so there must be some damage in this cable somewhere here Trying to see if I could feel anywhere that was a bit loose or a bit soft. So all I've got to do is just keep making incisions. Obviously this is going to be all taped back up again. Just so I can see the bare metal. And test it. So let's see here. So we've got it here. But we don't have it here. So now we're somewhere in between here. So there's a break somewhere in this area here. So I will make another one. About halfway between the two points. And I have nothing. So I have something here. I have nothing here. So there's a break somewhere, somewhere in between here.
which is really weird. Nothing here. Nothing here. So it's literally broken somewhere here. I see where it's broken. Right here. So it's literally, see if you, I can zoom in a bit. It literally has a break right here. literally broken right here so this is why we were getting no ignition so I am gonna I have got some con joiners I'm gonna have to make a connection between this new connection and join it join these uh, two pieces back together um, I will then extend the cable but for now I think I'm just going to put a spade connector on the end of that and then connect that onto the um, to the ignition coil. So what I've done for now is I can't seem to find any. I thought I had spade connectors, but I actually haven't got spade connectors. I've got a load of bullet connectors, and I wanted a spade. So for now, what I've had to do is just temporarily just cut it shorter back and join it. Just I've literally just joined it together. So now, if we check for continuity. We have continuity all the way around so i am gonna have to get a spade a proper spade and replace this but just for testing today we can work with that all right let's see if we can get some spark on this thing i don't know if you guys can see it but i can see the spark we have spark guys so problem sorted we are ready to try and see if we can fire this thing up so i'm going to put these spark plugs all in and uh yeah going to tidy up some of this cable in and let's see if we can get this thing started all right guys so good progress so far so what i've done is i've done a few little tidy ups i've actually fitted the uh rear and the front coils i'll show you that so they are actually fitted on properly on their brackets and they're grounded now to the bike so let me just show you that real quick so you can see this one here so i put the new, new bracket on uh bolted it on i bolted that um ground cable which is which was meant to be on this bolt here that green cable here so we've got ground uh to the ecu and also the actual uh coil pack is grounded by these two bolts here to this plate which is grounded to the engine so that's that's the front coil pack uh the rear coil pack you can see is here which is also bolted onto the to the frame and um and obviously i've connected the spark plug leads and i've connected all four of the spark plugs so here's the here's the front front ones they're all connected in so now just to check uh, for grounding so if we touch on this part of the coil pack here you can see we've got ground so our coil pack is grounded and also same thing for this coil pack here if i touch it on that screw or on the side here it's grounded so they're both grounded no more no more need for all these uh, uh crocodile clip stuff and all that but that's all done so we should be technically ready to crank and get spark in the engine all right guys so just double check everything so we should be cranking uh, let's just double check that we're cranking first <laughs> yes we are so we're cranking and our oil pressure light is going off that's great so technically, if I spray some brake cleaner in this, hopefully this thing should fire. Okay, guys, here we go. Obviously, you've got no exhaust, so if it does start, it's going to be really loud. Let's put the ignition on and uh, let's start off.
So guys, engine is running. We've got an engine running. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so relieved that it actually works. <laughs> um, so I guess next is exhaust. We've got to get the exhaust on this thing. Uh, and we need to get the carbs on this thing as well. So the carbs, hopefully this week, I should get this carb rebuilt. Um, the exhaust, I, I have exhaust. I need to go through the, the old exhaust and see if it's all right i know the clamps i think need replacing um but i think i've got everything to build an exhaust i know i've got some rare manifolds which i've already painted that need to be bolted on um, i can bolt those on um and i think all the other tubes and so on i think i need to give them a good polish that's what i want to do with them so yeah i think that will be the next thing to do So there's my exhaust gasket. So I put a tiny little bit of grease on it just to stick them in, make it easier to get them in. I put in new um, studs as well, exhaust studs. And they should go this way. So we've got the manifold in, new studs, new bolts, new gaskets, all ready for the back box to go on. I also have the gaskets that go here, which are slightly different from the gaskets that go from the head to the manifolds. Right guys, you guys have seen, I've been working on this part of the exhaust. Got the wire wheel on it, cleaning it up. It's not coming out too bad actually. I've got some areas that I'm gonna to need to use the drill bit 
the drill and my wire bit on the drill to get into these little bits which I couldn't get into but you can see the difference between this and that so definitely gonna come up really nice I'm gonna try and polish it as well and um, this will go on so this one goes on uh, something like <coughs> like this so these two go down to the front and this connects onto the rear manifold and obviously the pipe goes onto the back here so this is the back box that was on it <coughs> it's a Yoshimura uh, seems it's got some sort of carbon, carbon fiber it is in bad condition around here though so I'm not sure what we're going to do with that or whether we're going to replace this um, but here's the mounting bracket which I need to clean up and uh, yeah then but for now we probably end up using it and also guys we have the rear mud guard which I've just cleaned up I've also used some of that AF50 I think it's called um, on this rubber and it's on this plastic sorry and it's really giving it a nice shine so still a little bit of wet and a little bit greasy but I'll wipe it down well, I'm going to put this on and I think that's pretty much where we're going to stop today. Now I can get the battery and I can get the starter solenoid in and start to wire up the harness properly. Right guys, so this is where we're at. So as you can see, we've got the rear mud guard on. We've got the starter solenoid on. Engine uh, spark plugs and leads and coils are all connected. And uh, I'm gonna leave this battery here to charge for tonight. And uh, so yeah, I guess next will probably be, we can get the rest of this exhaust on. I've got the swing arm to work on, which is probably one of the next jobs I'll try and do as well once I get a chance and um obviously the carbs as well so the carbs i said i'm waiting for the rebuild kit for the carbs i have pretty much cleaned up all the bits and they've come out so good i'm so excited to um build those carbs and once we build the carbs we can get those carbs in and we can get this up bike running up with the exhaust properly and um yeah i think we're getting there so that is it from me today hope you guys enjoyed this video and the progress so far let me know what you think uh, please, and uh, uh, any tips or advice you can give me will be gladly appreciated also. So yeah, and also if you don't mind liking, commenting and subscribing to the channel, uh, it will help me um, a lot. So thanks for watching guys and we'll see you soon. Take care.